everyone, I'm Sarah, Virch Dexter's Crochet, and welcome. Today we're going to learn how to crochet the acorn scarf. And I'm not going to lie, this is my favorite scarf so far for the season. I may uh, come up with an, a couple more before the year end is out, but at the moment I am loving this acorn scarf. It's just so cozy and the perfect length to wear and of course this gorgeous texture. So there are some photos over there on richtexturescrochet.com. I do have my sample one here. It is just a gorgeous textured scarf. Fairly straightforward once you get the stitch pattern going. I've added a simple fringe down here at the bottom. It is of course optional. I've worked the scarf today in the Lion Brand Mandela Bonus Bundle. You'll see it here in the color uh, Centaur, I believe it's called. And uh, it's just a beautiful self-stripping yarn. It's a 100% worst weight acrylic yarn. Each of these cakes has approximately 1,100 yards of yarn in it. You're not going to use all of it. So I had... Uh, I believe about three color stripes left over in the cake, if that makes any sense. So you're going to use a lot of it, but not quite all of it. You'll have a little left over so you can make a longer or thicker fringe if you would like. Also, you're going to need a five millimeter or an H8 crochet hook and a copy of the free written instructions, which are on my website at richtexturescrochet.com. There's a direct link down in the description of this video. So thank you so much for joining me. While you're here, I invite you to subscribe. Take a look around. This channel is updated every single week with free crochet patterns and stitch tutorials. Our scarf today is worked in rows and we're going to be working along the short edges of our scarf. So you're going to start by making a slip knot and then by working a foundation row. Now the foundation row in this scarf is slightly different. We're not going to be working a typical foundation chain but a foundation row of long double crochet stitches. So what you're going to do is you're going to start by chaining four. You're then going to work a long double crochet into the third chain from your hook. Okay, so long double crochet into that third chain. To work the long double crochet, yarn over, insert your hook into that third chain. You'll have one chain left over. Yarn over, draw up a loop. Yarn over and draw through one loop yarn over and draw through two loops twice just like so you're then going to chain three and once again work a long double crochet into under the two loops at the top of your previous stitch so skip those three chains and then just here at the top, you see this one loop here, two loops here, horizontal loops, yarn over, draw up a loop, yarn over and pull through one loop, yarn over and pull through two loops twice. You're going to continue working these long double crochet stitches until you have a total of 12. If you would like to change the width of your scarf, uh, mine measures approximately eight, uh, nine inches across and the scarf is 94 inches long. So if you'd like it around the same width, you're going to work about 12 of these long double crochets. So chain three, yarn over, working under the top two loops of your previous stitches. Yarn over, drop a loop, yarn over and pull through one yarn over and pull through two twice. Repeat until you have 12 of them worked. Mm -hmm. 
Once you have that foundation row worked and have 12 long double crochets, you're ready to begin row one. For row one, you're going to chain three. You're then going to work a single crochet into the first space around the post of the first long double crochet. So just single crochet. You're then going to chain three and work a puff stitch into the same space. To work your puff stitch, you're going to yarn over, insert your hook into the first space, yarn over and drop a loop, and you're going to do that three times. It's once, twice, three times, then yarn over and draw through all the loops on your hook that your puff stitch made. Chain one and single crochet into the next space of long double crochet. You're then going to chain three and work a puff stitch into the same space. You're going to chain one and then you're going to repeat that all the way across into your next chain space or your long double crochet space, single crochet, chain three, puff stitch, and chain one. All the way across until you come to that remaining chain stitch. So I'm here at the end of my row one, working my final single crochet, chain three, and puff stitch. Once you've worked that puff stitch, you're simply going to finish off by working a single crochet into that final chain one, that final chain stitch. You can then chain three and turn your work. Now for row two, we're going to work a single crochet stitch, inserting our hook under the two loops that cross your puff stitch, your next puff stitch. So you've chained three. If you look at your next puff stitch, you see these two loops right across the top of that puff stitch. Insert your hook across the two front loops and into the chain three space and single crochet. Next chain three and work a puff stitch into the same chain three space. This time you're just working into the space and not under the two loops of the puff stitch. Chain one and you're going to repeat that all the way across. Under the top two loops of your puff stitch, insert your hook and into the chain three space and work a single crochet. Chain three and work a puff stitch into the same chain three space. Chain one and repeat single crochet, working across the puff stitch into the chain three space, chain three, and puff stitch. Chain one and repeat all the way across. When you come all the way across at the end of row two, you're going to finish off with that puff stitch then single crochet into that turning chain three space. Chain three and turn your work. And now for the rest of your pattern, you're simply going to repeat that row two. So single crochet across the puff and into your chain three space, then chain three and work a puff stitch into the same space. 
chain one and repeat that all the way across. When you uh, reach approximately 94 inches, you're then going to fasten off, weave in your ends, and you can add a fringe to your scarf if desired. I'm going to work a few more rows and then I'll go ahead and show you how I worked the fringe on my scarf. So go ahead, repeat row two until you have a total of about 94 inches. Once you have worked your scarf through to the 94 inches and you want to work a fringe on the ends of your scarf, all I did was I cut five lengths of yarn, depending on the length of your fringe, you can adjust the length, but I did six to eight inches or so. Cut five lengths of yarn, I then took my crochet hook and I evenly spaced them out, but I just inserted my crochet hook into the space where I wanted to put the little tassel, pulled my strands through. You're then going to fold them over so that the ends kind of match. Next, I simply tied a knot. I like this for scarves and items that you're going to wash occasionally because the tassels really stay in quite well and I think they look nice also. So you're just going to tie a knot, pull it down up to the base of your scarf. You can then go ahead and trim the ends. I don't see my scissors here but you would trim them to the uh, uh, same length of all of your other tassels. Do that for both sides and then your acorn scarf is complete. So thank you so much for joining me and uh, once again I invite you to subscribe, take a look around. There are many other scarf crochet patterns here on this channel. If you happen to make the acorn scarf, feel free to tag Rich Textures Crochet as you share it on social media and I'll come by and admire it. Until then, enjoy and happy crocheting. Bye! Mm -hmm.